All right, so tonight we are wiring the one battery to the other. So we ordered a bunch of stuff last week, mostly this cable. Um, we're using a double aught cable to connect the front to the bottom battery because um, when we built this battery, it's seven in parallel tied to seven in series. And so the seven in parallel that ends up between uh, the two, there's four on the bottom and three on the top. And so we needed a way to tie those together. So we thought to minimize the resistance, we would use a nice thick, heavy cable. So the problem is, <laughs> Um, I've never dealt with this kind of cable before, so um, it requires some special tools. So we have these these pliers, which don't look that big, but they cut through this stuff like butter. So they are um, these are awesome. So they cut right through it. And um, this was our crimper that we used for the little crimps. So this was the crimper that we used um, when we were doing the small crimps and to crimp all the uh, the BMS wires on. This worked perfect, but there's no way that this is going to work on something like that. So um, we got this thing, um, and this is overkill. Like this will do um, larger than four odd. So this will do some pretty huge wire, but um, it does this cable just fine. So we've done we've done a couple cables because we didn't want to make a video and be like, well, let's figure it out and fumble around. So anyway. This is the crimper that we're using, and it's it's actually hydraulic. So there's this um, there's a little tiny hydraulic piston in there, just like a car jack, and it, and the wire goes in between these two lugs. And so what happens is it squeezes that. Um, they say this is 16 tons of pressure. Um, I'm I don't know if it's 16 tons, but it's a lot. Um, because it smashes the little crimpers like nothing. And what happens actually is inside, um, it's called cold welding. And what happens is it squeezes it so hard that it becomes like a solid piece of metal. So if you were to cut cut away the um, cut away the connector, you would see that it's basically a solid piece of copper in the shape of a, of a hexagon, just like, you know, these things are the shape of a hexagon. So anyway, that's what we're using. Um, we, we did start out and we were gonna, we, we did the wires too short. Um, we didn't realize um, this stuff bends really nicely. It's got a, it's got a ton of, of little tiny cables in it, but it doesn't bend so nicely that you can get away with a cable this short. So we ended up having to, um, our original plan was to run the cable through this little piece of wood uh, from one cell to the other. But that ended up, it just, it just was too, it was too close. And so what we ended up doing was coming around. So if you look um, at the way we did it, it's, co it's coming around now instead of through. So this is it. So the bottom one connects to the bottom one, the middle one connects to the middle one, and then this one will connect to this middle one, uh, to, I'm sorry, to this top one down here. So this is the way it's going so far. Um, We're just going to show you the technique that we used um, because when it wasn't something that's super obvious. So um, we'll go ahead and make up a cable. So first thing we do is start with this and I use these um, to just strip away about just over a half of an inch. So these are, they're amazingly sharp and the nice thing about this wire is that there's this little protective, um, there's this little protective, um, it's almost like a paper and um, it doesn't let you cut it too far. So it's pretty neat stuff. So I haven't, I've done like five or six of these now and I haven't cut a single strand of wire, which can, I can't say is not is the same with the working with smaller wire. So anyway, um, that's what we do. And then we take one of the connectors so we bought some connectors and so um, a lot of people like to spin these on here just to make sure no stray hairs get out so um, you can spin that on there and it'll sit pretty much flush and then we put it in this giant crimper and then crimp it so um, and then afterwards we take a piece of heat shrink and we um, we attach a piece of heat shrink 
pretty much almost all the way to where there's lettering. And then um, because these are so close, what we do is we put it in a vise and then we bend this tab um, up at about a 45 degree, maybe a little steeper angle. So right now they're flat. And so we put it in a vise and just take a little hammer and, and um, pound them up so that they'll fit right. So this is the start of one and we'll set up the camera because I actually need my wife to hold the cable when we do this. So anyway, we'll, um, we'll set this up and then we'll show you how we crimp them on. on there like that. You want to hold it? Can you get it kind of tight on what he's doing, like with his yeah. hands and Ready? On this? In? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Now we squeeze. Okay, and then we turn it 90 degrees, and then we'll crimp again, just in case. It seems to have, we've not had a bad crimp yet, and we've been turning it 90 degrees, so we're gonna stick with what works. All right, so this is what it looks like when it's done being crimped, and that is on there really well. So, so now what we do, is we put a piece of heat shrink on um, just to kind of protect it from getting too badly oxidized. So there's that. And so I use a heat gun because you get a lot better results than trying to use like a lighter which leaves it all sooty and looking kind of junky. So once it's done, it'll kind of, it looks like that. So now, take this guy, and we're going to bend it in on itself. So we put it past the hole. Now we try to get it as straight as we can. There. It's a little crooked. Is it a little crooked? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Or is that the heat shrink? Well, yeah, it could be the heat shrink. Okay. Okay. And so what that does is it gives us a cable that comes away from the other bars. So we can go in and tie this to the other bars. All right, so we are ready to measure how long this is. And we've had better luck with just kind of bolting one side and then running the other side than we have with trying, we tried to do it with a piece of rope. <laughs> we tried to do it with something else and it didn't work out very well. So. Um, what we do is I've already loosened this one under here and you can see we've we've kind of covered everything up to to minimize the risk of shorting this stuff out because there's a there's a lot of power in here there's a lot of danger and there's a lot of power in these batteries and they're able to discharge um, much much higher rates than a lead acid battery so we're trying to be you know as careful as we can um, just to, to minimize uh, you know having an accident or anything like that so we've got everything kind of covered up so that nothing is exposed or anything like that in case a wrench were to fall on it or a screwdriver we slipped or something um, so we've we've covered uh, most of that stuff up and so now I'm gonna reach through here and put this through and then we'll just stick it on here and I always thread them by hand just to be sure that I'm not cross-threading them. So I'll go ahead and cinch it. And see that brings, that makes a nice, it brings it far away from, from the other pieces of metal. So here, so we know that about right here um, gives us a pretty comfortable spacing. And that's good, like that? Yeah. Like that curve? Yeah, it just, you know, so it's far, yeah. So if we... 
do about right there to like here because okay. then the lug will yeah. go up you think yeah or a little bit more maybe because a little bit of space isn't going to hurt okay okay so about right there yep so we mark it there okay and then we take our our pliers and these don't look like much but watch how these cut so ready <laughs> so <laughs> they they're pretty effective at cutting this stuff so now what we'll do is um we'll take that off and we'll redo we'll work on this side now so I'll So if we compare this to the lug, we see that it goes all the way to the end. Whoops. So now we're going to make sure we remove all this cardboard and make sure all the hairs are in. But if we compare this, we see that we're going to have plenty of wire there. So once we put that in there. And then with this one, it's important to line them up so that they're at least facing the same way. This wire is so thick that it does not twist much. So we have to ensure that it's labeled there. But we, what we want to do is look around and make sure that we don't see any wires coming out of there. Because that's what causes shorts and stuff is those little wires hanging out. So, so make sure it's lined up with that one. Yep. Okay. Makes a funny noise. Alright, so now we have our wire and we see that it's oriented in the right way. So now we'll go ahead and put the heat shrink on. Set. All right, now it's hammer time. You can't touch this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Those of you over 40 will get that. So we just beat it down. And so now we have a nice thick curve. So now when we put this one on there and this one on here, they'll they'll bend and they'll they'll pull the wires away from the battery. So this is the way we make cables. And um, we saw several videos uh, making them and we'd never we didn't know what to expect with this big of wire. Um, and it was like I said we had to sort of change plans um, mid project because we didn't realize this this uh, this cable needed so much space but um, now that we've kind of worked with it a little bit we're a little bit more comfortable with it and these crimps um, from the videos I saw on the internet where they cut the crimp off and it's a solid like it really welds itself to this so this is supposedly the best way to do it um, the other ways I've seen to do it is um, there's these big giant they look like bolt cutter type things and they just put a big dent in one of the in one of the top of the things and I've heard that that's just not as good um, the other way we've seen is um, there's this little thing that people use a hammer to kind of drive a wedge into the top and again it just it didn't seem as good as as this method and this tool I'm gonna say was less than thirty dollars it really wasn't very expensive um, so I in my opinion if you're gonna do your own cables it's worth buying this tool. So, um, anyway, that's how we're making our cables. All right, so now we're gonna just test fit it. Oh, so again, I'm doing this by hand, just to be sure that we have everything set. When we do this for real, we will likely use um, there's this grease that you can get that prevents the oxidation of the bolts. So um, we'll just dip a little Q-tip in that and strip, run it around the, 
the threads just to be sure there's no oxidation that happens at that joint point. So anyway, this is just test fitting for now. We're not gonna cover it in a bunch of grease. We're just making sure everything fits and that everything works. So we'll get this hooked up and then we'll measure our voltages just to be sure that we, um, that we have it hooked up correctly. So as you can see, um, this does a pretty good job of pulling the cable away from, away from the other bars, especially if we cheat it up a little bit. So here, we'll screw this in. Okay, and then we'll, this one's loose as well because I was tightening that one. So there, it's on there good. And so what we've been doing is taking this, which we've already, we are already made to kind of cover it up, um, and just sort of wrapping it around so that it covers everything. Um, kind of like that. And then we'll bring another piece in here and then we'll do the entire cable, kind of like we did these here. So if you can see those. Um, so it, what it does is it covers everything up so that there's no, you know, slipped wrenches or anything all like right. that. So it's all wired up. Um, we'll make another piece here and just kind of cover this whole thing. We'll make a piece for this side on this side to cover this whole thing here. Again, there's a lot of voltage coming out of these things. So what we're going to do real quick is just make, make a test measurement to see if our voltages are on. All right, so our m utmost negative is down here at the bottom, and our most positive is at the top. And so we're just going to go ahead and come in from the side where we can't, there's less risk of, of having a short. And then we should see the voltage up there. Yeah, 55.7. 55, okay, good. So that's what we expected. Um, so it, these are wired correctly now. Um, and they are, you know, they should be the right length. And wire this thick over this small of distance, um, there shouldn't be a lot of resistance. So this should look very similar to all these other ones that are tied uh, seven in parallel. So it should, it should do quite well. So we'll make another, we'll go ahead and work on making another piece of loom to cover this and then cover the wire and then cover this backside of the, um, of the bus bar there. So, um, so far it's turning out pretty good. We had to modify our plan a little bit. You can kind of see our hole here where we, where we thought we could get a wire through there, but these are just too thick. And so it ended up not, um, it's just not safe enough. And so making a bigger loop like that to get the wire away from the, uh, away from the other bus bars was a better idea. So that's, that's what we're going with. And we're trying to we're trying to put as much uh, stuff in between each one so that it doesn't accidentally um, kind of, you know, get crossed and stuff like that. So that's our wiring setup.